Thank you very much, uh, the organizer, for inviting me to present in this uh, conference. Uh, the title of my presentation is Novel Drug Delivery Systems Based on Silver Nanoparticles, Hyaluronic Acid and Liposomes. I am uh, Muhammad Azmuddin Abdullah from the Institute of Marine Biotechnology, University of Malaysia, Trangano. Uh, the co-author of this uh, paper with my student, uh, Dr. Hana Ali Hussein. This is the outline of the presentation, introduction, silver nanoparticles as drug delivery system, uh, AGNPs, which is a silver nanoparticles microalgae co-application, hyaluronic acid as drug delivery system, hyaluronic acid coated silver nanoparticles, liposomes as drug delivery system, and conclusion. As we know, cancer starts from a uh, mutation of normal cells. As you can see here, the uh, normal cells become abnormal and then the abnormal cell starts to multiply and become malignant. And this is uh, assisted by angiogenesis where all these uh, blood vessels start to uh, stimulate growth of uh, cancer cells. It's a multifactorial disease uh, with uncontrolled growth of normal cells. Um, so in this case for colorectal, colorectal cancer, we find that the, the different stages of growth until it becomes malignant. Uh, in terms of metastasis, uh, the invasion of uh, cancer cells in the blood vessel, and then the cells start to be uh, disseminated and start to travel within the body from one organ to another organ or from one body part to another body parts and start to become, uh, start to produce from primary tumor to secondary tumor. This is the statistics from 1930 to 2008, uh, based on uh, in the US, where uh, the, the most serious cancer in male is lung, followed by prostate and pancreas also, uh, towards uh, in the last uh, five years or so. In female, the major cancer is lung also, but also breast cancer. Breast cancer. But I think recently, uh, United Nation has declared that breast cancer has taken over lung as the major uh, cancer in the world nowadays. Uh, this is uh, the hallmarks of cancer, where you find that there is self sufficiency in growth signals and uh, sensi insensitivity to anti-growth signals, meaning it's promoting the growth, cell growth. Then it, it tissue invasion and metastasis. The um, replicative potential has been increased. And uh, angiogenesis, where the blood vessels uh, being, uh, is growing to promote cancer cell growth. And also, uh, they are avoiding apoptosis, the cells, cancer cells. Um, when it comes to chemotherapeutics, there is a new development in terms of nano-targeted drug delivery system uh, for control release and with a more tunable release mechanism. And uh, the need for to um, characterize the cells and also uh, the biomarkers and the transduction pathways. The problem with uh, chemotherapeutic therapeutic drugs, some of them are that they damage both normal and cancerous cells, leading to various side effects. Uh, it's also, the drug is also easily broken down by physiological immune re reactions in the body. And the, the drugs normally have low solubility, uh, limited bioaccessibility, uh, less ability to spread to other, to the outer membrane, requires high quantity for intravenous intake and some undesirable effects. So drug delivery system has been developed to control the delivery of pharmaceutical compounds. Um, different types of DDS has been developed so far, including liposomes, proliposomes, prodrugs, cyclodextrins, microspheres, gels, and dendrimas. And nanotechnologies uh, in the last 20 or 30 years have developed nanovectors with drug loading using uh, chemical synthesis and bonding, different chemical bonding. Uh, where you can have multi, multiple nano components uh, where each can be designed to accomplish a specific task, for example, to overcome multi-drug resistance or for direct delivery of therapeutics. Uh, 
the combinatorial therapy with another medicines could eliminate metastasis and also to eliminate uh, recurrence of tumor uh, after the first treatment. And these are some examples, uh, nanosphere, you have micelle, a liposome, and also dendrema. And uh, the different types of uh, mechanisms, these different types of uh, drug, drug carriers can, can be affected by temperature, pH, osmotic control delivery, and, and uh, enzymes. In terms of silver nanoparticles, the nanostructures uh, could control the stability and solubility of the cancer drugs. It, it prevents uh, drug degradation, enhance half-life uh, for uh, blood circulation and targeting and distribution. Um, drug release can be uh, targeted at the cancer sites and also reduce the drug resistance. Silver nanoparticles in cancer treatment may be in the form of passive or active targeting. Um, but the aggregation of the drugs at the target site could increase the activity of anti-cancer therapy. These are some of the advantages of uh, silver nanoparticles, biocompatibility uh, and selectively towards uh, malignant cells, uh, phototermal and chemotherapy, controlled drug delivery, uh, the synthesis, facile synthesis for functionalization and tunability, and also high drug loading capacity. Uh, this is the example of a mechanism involving uh, al alendronate, uh, which is the, actually uh, a different drug uh, for osteoporosis. But when you combine this with um, RHB and doxorubicin, you will find that the inhibition of cancer cells and also the IC50 has been much improved with increased toxicity. This is partially because of the higher lipolicity, lipopolicity and uh, higher intake uptake of uh, the drug on uh, silver nanoparticles with RHB dots. This is our study with uh, microalgae extracts, chloroform extracts, uh, T. suesica, the algae species. When we combine this with silver nanoparticles, we find that it is highly cytotoxic to MCF7 cells, especially at these two ratios, after 24 hours, after 48 hours, and also after 72 hours. But uh, slightly, uh, it's not too much cytotoxic on 41. At these ratios, we have also tested at higher ratios at 3 to 1, 4 to 1, and 5 to 1 of silver nanoparticles. And both MCF7 and 41 are very much affected. But in all the ratios that we have tested, we are either having like at the moment for these ratios tested non-cytotoxicity on viral cells and also at the 3, 1, 4, 1 and 5, 1 at much reduced cytotoxicity. So in a way, silver nanoparticles, when you combine with uh, microalgal extracts, you have specificity towards cancer cells, in this case, MCF7 and 41, but uh, it's not specific to viral cells. So this is very advantageous uh, to reduce side, side effects of the treatment. But silver nanoparticles as a single application is very much cytotoxic to MCF7, 41, and even to viral cells also. When we check the ADP ATP ratio and also the caspase 3 and 7, we find that uh, the, uh, the, the level of ADP ATP ratio for co-application is much higher as compared to drug, the drug silver nanoparticles and tamoxifen, the breast cancer drug, but also uh, much higher than control for MCF7, for 41 also. And for viral cells, you will find that tamoxifen and uh, silver nanoparticles are very cytotoxic. In, in terms of case space, you will find that uh, silver nanoparticles with uh, microalgal extracts uh, have much higher, even much higher than tamoxifen, suggesting that this is uh, late apoptotic events uh, for cancer cells. Uh, you will find uh, there is accumulation of uh, pre-apoptotic events, higher ADP ratio and case space as shown earlier. Uh, but there is no cytotoxic. This is consistent for all microalgal extracts that we have tested. Uh, no cytotoxicity against non-cancerous viral cells, including nanochloropsis oculata and um, chlorella also. Um, uh, with this co-application, we have early and late apoptotic events and significant increase in pro-apoptotic G1 subface. 
Silver nanoparticles have also been uh, reported with uh, kytosan as a nanocarrier, which resulted in apoptosis, increase in reactive oxygen species, mitochondrial dysfunction, and uh, DNA fragmentation, leading to the killing of cancer cells. And when tested, the kytosan based uh, silver nanoparticles uh, this found that this is inducing apoptosis against human colon cancer cells, HT29, at a very much low AC50, IC50 of 0.33 microgram per mil. And uh, this uh, formulation promotes activation of caspase, elevates rate of species and co as compared to silver nanoparticles alone. So drugs, uh, anti-cancer drugs, are almost 40% of them are poorly soluble in water. So with that, it's reduced uh, the efficacy. And if you want to increase the efficacy, you have to increase the dosage, and then this could lead to systemic cytotoxicity uh, and also side effects. So when we use hyaluronic acid as a drug carrier, hopefully it can promote anti-cancer activities, but at the same time, reduce systemic cytotoxicity. Hyaluronic acid is a biopolymer, a biocompatible, negatively charged uh, disaccharide member of the uh, glycosyl aminoglycan and the component of extracellular matrix um, is attached to beta 1 3 of an n-acetyl glucosamine it's distributed throughout the epithelial connective and uh, tissues uh, regulates water balance field space interacts with extracellular molecules and facilitates cell proliferation the ha chemical functionalization in the groups of carbo carbon steel acetamido and hydroxyl HA has a specific uh, link to CD4 receptor, and this uh, receptor is actually overexpressed in different cancerous cells. And HA can be can can form interaction with the CD44. So when you load a drug to HA, hopefully it will be attached to CD44, which is overexpressed in cancerous cells, and uh, start to kill the cancer cells. Uh, the yellow acid as de drug delivery system, uh, you can form it as a drug conjugation or micelles, uh, as a polymer nanoparticles, and also as a surface uh, decorated nanocarriers. Uh, this is an example of uh, make use, making use of uh, hyaluronic acid with a drug, uh, doxorubicin, where the docs uh, loaded the nanoparticles uh, injected uh, intravenously and it's uh, have effect on tumor cells. So HA-based nanocarriers uh, interact ionically to form polymeric nanoparticles, uh, can be used to decorate the surface of fatty, acid, acid, fatty systems such as liposome, and also magnetic nanoparticles. Um, the diroxorabucin uh, loaded GHH that we have showed just now had enhanced anti-cancer activity against liver cancer, but with reduced toxic side effects. These are different examples of uh, uh, different hyaluronic acid-based drug delivery systems with different uh, in vivo characteristics. Uh, you can check this in Huang Huang, uh, 2018. But the, the basic point is that it's a slow release. It can increase the retention time and half-life of the drugs. And, uh, but the, the release can be affected, much affected by the cross-linking density. Uh, the, the, the carrier and also um, the stability can be maintained. This is an example of our study with uh, hyaluronic acid um, where we combine hyaluronic acid with paclitaxel. And this is the release kinetic studies which we find that uh, non-ficin diffusion is predominant uh, in both diffusion and dissolution for control drug release. And this is the, the morphological analysis on lung cancer cells, colorectal cancer cells, and uh, breast cancer cells of uh, paclitaxel and also hyaluronic acid paclitaxel. And we find that uh, for cisplatin, it's almost comparable, but for paclitaxel, it's, uh, there is some improvement in terms of IC50 uh, for lung cancer, uh, the lung cancer, colorectal cancer, and also breast cancer cells. We can also develop a yellow acid coated as silver nanoparticles um, to reduce cytotoxicity against normal cells and increase stability against cancer cells. 
uh, silver nanoparticles could serve as a nano platform for many biological uh, applications. Uh, and the mechanism basically a reduction of mitochondrial membrane potential, pycnosis, autophagy, cell cycle arrest, and apoptosis. So this is an example where when you attach silver nanoparticles to yellow renin acid, it's attached to the CD44, yellow renin acid, and start to uh, uh, cause damage to cancer cells on the mitochondria, DNA, cell cycle arrest, and also apoptosis. So yellow renin acid has also been developed uh, making use of uh, yaluronidase triggered phototermal activity based on graphene oxide. And this has resulted in increased temperature, local temperature of the microenvironment of cancer cells. And not only with uh, by having anti-cancer cells, but it also has the antibacterial activity uh, with no or reduced effects on the mammalian cells in this study of a mice, mice model with excellent activity for wound disinfection model. The next uh, delivery, drug delivery system is liposomes. So this is the first nano drug delivery system that has been successfully translated into real-time clinical applications. The delivery of uh, treatments by liposomes alters distribution profile, uh, enhance the therapeutic index. So drugs with toxicity and efficacy problems, when you attach to uh, liposomes, you will get reduced toxicity and enhanced efficacy. These are some examples of uh, liposome-based nanodrug delivery systems for antifungal, anti-inflammatory, therapeutic genes, and anti-cancer activities, uh, including the, this photodynamic therapy. These are all marketed in the in, in, for liposomes. So by having a conventional liposome, uh, PEG-lighted, PEG, polyethylene glycolated liposome, uh, trig ligand-targeted liposome, and teranostic liposome, you have comprehensive uh, uh, target specific binding of immunoliposomes uh, with steric stabilization, long circulating immunoliposomes, and enhanced pharmacokinetics. So, liposome loaded with two or more various drugs simultaneously improve uh, therapeutic effects on cancer cells. So, when you have two or more compounds, you can reduce the effective doses, but also associated effects. And the advantage of combination therapy is that it, it confers synergistic effects, overcome multi-drug resistance, and reduce toxicity. In, uh, so you can achieve this with a dual drug formulation where you have higher anti-cancer activity, uh, uh, also overcome by multi-drug resistance, and but at the same time, reduce systemic toxicity to healthy cells. So in conclusion, drugs with low solubility uh, having diverse biopharmaceutical problems because of the limited uh, bioaccessibility, less ability to spread to the membrane, requires higher quantity for intravenous intake and undesirable effects. We can use silver nanoparticles and hyaluronic acid uh, for drug, targeted drug delivery, uh, enhanced therapeutic efficacy. And in the case of hyaluronic acid, it is biodegradable, it's biocompatible, and it has specific binding to CD44 receptors. So yellow acid offers promising ligand for a, a silver nanoparticles to reduce cyto, to reduce uh, to reduce cytotoxicity against normal cells but increase stability against cancer cells. So the chemotherapeutic agents encapsulated with liposomal structures can limit uh, the normal tissue uptake but uh, enhance therapeutic effects on targeted disease site. So with we have better understanding of uh, silver nanoparticles, yellow acid, and liposomal drug interaction with the biological system we can have uh, noble anti-cancer therapeutics with enhanced activities and safety. And large group of urinary acid and liposome are now at the preclinical and clinical trials to develop new model uh, with focus on diagnosis, treatment, and prevention. Thank you very much.